This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Yo, what's going on guys? It's Sam here. Today we're checking out iOS 13 at beta 7. Apple just released this to developers. If you are a public beta tester, you should be getting it soon. And while the big changes are unquestionably beginning to slow down, I wanna show you guys some other cool stuff that Apple changed and tweaked in iOS 13 at beta 7 or public beta 6. So if you're excited for this video, drop a like down below, hit subscribe for more, and uh, let's go ahead and jump in. Where I wanna jump in is with 3D Touch. I don't know how Apple's done it, guys, because it started out so rough. I thought that 3D Touch and Haptic Touch, even though Apple was messing with it, was just going in a bad direction. I don't know what they've been doing, but it is better and I would say faster than it has ever been since I've had an iPhone with 3D Touch. Uh, I mean, look at the responsiveness on this, guys. It is out of this world. Even on video, I don't know if it does it justice, just to feel the responsiveness in your hand is incredible. So if you guys are on iOS 13, you'll definitely wanna update if you have haptic touch or 3D touch enabled because this stuff is out of this world. Next up with folders, they are a little bit different. You saw in the last beta that they were super, super transparent and translucent. I actually thought it looked really, really cool. Now it's really not to that same extent anymore. For example, if I drag it like right here, yes, it is blurred to some extent, but before this would have been like an orange or red background. So Apple has tweaked that, unfortunately. Um, I don't know, I guess it's okay, but I kind of like the old folder background a little bit better. Also with 3D Touch, you can now like 3D Touch and drag in one fluid motion as well as 3D Touch and drag down. So let me show you what I mean. You can now do this and then go up without having to do two separate interactions or drags. Again, that was removed when iOS 13 was first introduced, but it's back now. Inside of the home app on iOS 13, the old wallpapers are back. So if you hit choose from existing, you've got all the new ones right here. You've got like the oranges, red, yellow, turquoise or blue, purple, green and then a random dark green. Like, I don't actually know why Apple has this too in there. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but what we've got back are the traditional yellow, blue, and green gradients. Uh, I mean, they look okay. Compared to these, I'd say they're a lot more boring, but if you were missing them, well, they are back in iOS 13 at beta seven. Also speaking of wallpapers, dynamic wallpapers are back in uh, their full-fledged beauty. I thought this would indicate that maybe they were getting updated, but uh, apparently, uh, apparently they're gonna be remaining for yet another year guys They're like pretty much the exact same wallpapers we've had since iOS 7 now We're hearing that the wallpapers for the new iPhones are gonna be pretty incredible We only got three this year with the iPhone 10s series, but uh, I'm excited to see what Apple works on and stills of course guys uh, Untouched still nothing new here just yet. We'll probably have to wait till the iOS 13 GM release to actually get new wallpapers inside of this section. If you're beta testing an app in iOS 13 beta seven and you wanna share feedback with developers, there is now this screenshot that you'll get to see. It's a little bit different than what they showed you traditionally. It says share feedback, take a screenshot and send to the developer directly from this beta app, which is cool. So if you are in a beta app and you screenshot, there is an option in the share sheet to send it directly to the developer rather than having to email it or, or do something else. And you get this nice little graphic, which is new in iOS 13 beta seven, honestly, one of the larger aesthetical changes in this update. Inside Control Center, the text for dark mode is back to normal. Before it would say like dark mode colon on or off. It looked a bit analytical. It looks like that was actually a mistake. Now it is back to normal, just says dark mode off until sunset or on until sunrise. Inside of settings, there's a toggle for VPN right here because I've been using NordVPN. I've been partnered up with them for a number of months now and I keep having them back on the channel because I don't like the idea of other people following me around online and seeing my data. That's the whole purpose of using a VPN so that only what you send and receive is seen by you and nobody else in the middle. There's so many other cheap or free VPNs out there that just don't cut it because they don't have 5,600 servers around the world in over 60 countries like NordVPN. There's no data logging and of course because again NordVPN isn't like the rest of them there is unlimited bandwidth so they're never going to shut you off after a certain amount of time like they care about your data they care about your experience and that has been my experience with NordVPN as well. Right now they have a really good deal going on if you guys sign up in August at nordvpn.org slash iAppDatoS. It's $2.99 a month only for the three-year plan and they're throwing in a bonus month on them. Go ahead and check out my link and code down below right now and get started with this really good deal. When looking at your screen time statistics, if you tap on see all activity and then go to day, it is actually gonna show you your weekly as well as your daily. It's actually a pretty cool user interface because right here you get a look at you know Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, your entire week sort of uh, at a glance. Now if you go to day, it highlights just that one until you tap back on the entire panel, but it highlights just your actual day and will show you, you know, hour by hour. Like right now, we're currently filling up that one with a lot of 
Reddit, and Twitter. Wow, it's almost like an iOS beta it just came out, but it'll show you both at the same time, which is pretty cool. Basically takes your week view and then breaks it down into day. In the Shortcuts app, the automation tab is still missing. Uh, it was removed like a beta or two ago, and it looks like it will be back in the GM, but right now uh, it is still gone. So one of the tentpole features, really the tentpole feature of the Shortcuts app is still disabled, which is a little bit disappointing now. Well, come on guys, we're trying to use these automations all day. Faster apps, smaller app updates, and and smaller app sizes in general are now live in iOS 13, but to get them, you have to like reinstall all of your apps, which uh, somebody who's on the team over at Apple has said you can do by basically restoring your iPhone and then restoring all your apps from iCloud. I have not tested it yet, just because I know that's a bit of a tedious process, but if you want to get that better performance, smaller app sizes and app updates, that is actually live in iOS 13 now. And the iPad also saw iOS 13 beta 7, or more technically iPad OS 13 beta 7, but I wasn't able to find any like exclusive features on here to show you guys. Sometimes the iPad would grab a new exclusive feature like a few betas ago we did see uh, this one which is really cool the ability to like show bigger or more icons on the home screen. That was a neat little iPad exclusive but it looks like Apple really is starting to wind down uh, and start refining things which is pretty cool. We got six betas of new features and changes that were pretty significant. Traditionally those would slow down in you know beta 3 or beta 4. So props to Apple on iOS 13 beta 7. My battery life has been pretty good overall although some days I feel like my iPhone 10s just you know, uh, poops the bed as they say. But my iPad has been pretty consistent overall and the performance is absolutely getting better. Like I showed you guys 3D Touch earlier on the iPhone, but also on the iPad, it, it's pretty quick. Not as quick, I would say, because you do have to rely on that tap and hold, but the reliability is so, so good. So keep up the good work, Apple. iOS 13 should be out in around a month for everybody. That's iOS 13 beta 7. If you guys enjoyed the video, it does seriously help me out. I really appreciate it if you drop a like down below and hit subscribe so you stay up to date on all the latest Apple news. That's all I have for you in this video. Thanks so much for watching. You guys are the best, and I'll catch up with all of you in my next video.